Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in Chapter 1 talking about the managing of the test activities where we are still with our 1.2 that is the context of testing and today we shall be jumping on to the next segment of it that is 1.2.6 test management activities for different test types and when we talk about test types we shall understand what a manager should be responsible for in terms of managing functional, non-functional, black box, white box, etc. Well, to set up this context, of course, uh, we want to remind you that as a part of our fundamentals, we have already covered that test types generally talk about the difference between the black box, the white box, and uh, the certainly the functional and functionals and in that context all we want to say to you from this particular tutorial is that for a good test manager it is very important that they do not fail to plan effectively for all other test types also sometimes what happens that a test manager generally concentrates on the black box testing and at the same time majorly responsible for functional testing and sometimes they may fail to do an effective plan for non-functional tests which are being organized and conducted However, just to remind you, probably if you have been through the test analyst certification, you already know, know about it. But if in case not, uh, there are certain non-functional levels which come into the stake of the functional testing as well. And being a test manager, you are responsible for having the balance between the functional and non-functional. It's not that just because you might have been doing for 10 years only functional testing, being a test manager, you should only concentrate on functional testing. And that's the very common reason why today test managers fail to plan effectively for non-functional testing. Just because they generally have done functional forever and they really do not understand much about non-functional testing. So they should hire technical test analysts which will play the vital role in contributing to the management activities or should consider non-functional and other like white box test into the consideration. When white testing is not a part of the testing team responsibility, then why the test manager should be worried about it? Of course, indeed, uh, it's not about being worried about it. It's more of like collaborating and coordinating on those activities which the development manager would be performing and what are we anticipating to come from them as a part of the report or what kind of coverage measures so that we can effectively look forward to plan our test. So let's get into the deep dive here and try understanding that what are those key factors and key activities we shall be worried about when planning for these functional, non-functional, white box, black box, and other test types. To get started, of course, effective test management requires an integrated approach that considers the unique demand of functional, non-functional, black box, and white box testing. For managers carrying out functional testing, the focus is on ensuring that all the functionalities are thoroughly tested and meet the defined requirements, which is indeed one of our very common expectations for doing effective and proper planning for all the functional and other test types needs. Also to add, when it comes to non-functional testing, management revolves around a very fine system attributes like performance and security. Same way, when it comes to black box testing, management involves ensuring that the tests are user focused and that all the possible external interactions are covered. When it comes to white box testing, management emphasizes understanding the code structure and ensuring that the tests thoroughly cover the internal logic. Indeed, exactly that's the point. We wanted to give you the context uh, to set up the objectives that what are we doing as a manager as it comes to various test types. Because we may have different expectations, different objectives, different goals from each of these test types. And being a manager, we should have the capability of defining them, determining them, or at least having this outset defined that what to expect from the other stakeholders when they are performing it. So let's get into a deep dive here and try understanding a little more that what we are talking about. The very first one we are talking about is functional testing management. Here, we pretty much know a lot about it. So we look forward to do uh, strategic planning and progress tracking. So here, crafting a detailed test strategy that aligns with the functional requirements and project objectives, as well as monitoring progress. And the second important thing is, of course, the resource coordination, allocating human and technical resources efficiently to cover all the functional aspects of the system. So indeed, the functional levels are unit integration, system and acceptance. So we look forward to do all that which is done by us, be it about unit 
so unit integration system system integration etc however acceptance is done more by the business as we say but there could be some of the non-functional which might also be coming into our context so resource is one important thing let it be the people based or the technical aspects and same way we look forward to do the proper planning defining a proper approach that how best we can perform it let's quickly jump on to the non-functional side of it and when we talk about the non-functional testing of course, performance benchmarking is one of our key activities, which we quite often perform as a common test level. So establishing performance uh, benchmarks and managing the testing activities that assess the system against these criteria. And the second one is, of course, compliance verification, which is overseeing tests that ensures the system meets the non-functional standards, such as security, usability, and reliability. Further to add on top of it, of course, I would suggest that a test manager should always understand the scope of work. It's not necessary that any non-functional level should be done by you. And again, it's not necessary that you're not doing any of the non-functional level. Sometimes we may, as a part of the scope or scope of work, may have some of the non-functionals being done by us, depending on how do you have your team and whether you have the resources or not. If in case you have them, you look forward to plan for them effectively. When it comes to performance, we set up the required SLAs and benchmarking. And same way, when it comes to security, usability, accessibility, and a few other non-functional levels, we define the regulatory requirements, the compliance requirements, etc., and do a strategic approach definition, which helps us to achieve them, right? So in simple one-liner, all we want to say that it is very important for a test manager to understand what is in your bucket list to do that and do not fail to do a proper planning for it. Okay, the next one here we're talking about is black box test management, which is pretty straightforward. We need to talk about the test coverage analysis. Ensure that the black box tests cover all the user scenarios and the various business requirement. And second is, of course, the feedback incorporation, uh, managing the process of gathering feedback from the stakeholders to refine black box testing approaches and the fixing of the defects. So whatever it takes, how exactly we can get the information from and we look forward to collaborate with the developer here the feedback is also being referred to as uh, during the black box testing as testing team is responsible for that we may report several defects to different stakeholder right design issues going to designer development issues going to developer so they may look forward to have more information or support from you and that is where we look forward to collaborate and assist us assist them with all that information what they need to basically help them do better RCA or help them get resolved those defects which we have reported. And finally, when it comes to the next one, that is white box testing management. Here we look forward to uh, do the code coverage optimization. As I mentioned earlier, overseeing the use of code coverage tools to identify gaps in white box testing and detecting or directing resources to address these areas. So more importantly, we are interested in identifying our own coverages because sometimes the development team may not provide you the necessary information to capture the coverage reports, or maybe they may not be supplying it. So as a testing team, we may have effective tools available within the organization or should look forward to find a way that how you can measure the required coverage after the unit test uh, is done. And that's where we may be more promising to you know, reduce the number of uh, defects before we get started with other levels of testing. And the second important thing here, which is, of course, technical insights integration, which is to manage the incorporation of technical insights into the test planning process, ensuring that tests are designed with an understanding of the internal working of the application, which indeed talks about those things which are basically not our responsibility, but yet gaining the insights, gaining the understanding of that could help us to build better test cases. <clears throat> Okay, so it, that's where basically uh, it becomes important for the test manager to be an effective contributor throughout the process, throughout the life cycle, and making sure that they are well collaborating with other managers to collect the different schedules, different uh, events happening there, and then making sure that we have the knowledge what the team is performing and how these information would be guiding us to do effective test management for our testing activities. So put together, that's pretty much what we had from this particular tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.